What can I say about Gennaro Contado? Well, he's my mentor, my London dad. He is incredible. He's a force of nature and he's a great, great cook. There's not much he doesn't know about food. The guy is crazy, but he is brilliant. Lots of memories, lots of nostalgia. Sometimes he goes crazy and you might not understand a word he's saying, but it doesn't matter because it's all happening on the plate and with the hands. And that's what I love about food because you do not need language. You just watch what they're doing. Come on! I am Gennaro Contaldo and this is my family record. It's so good. Olive oil goes in. 500 gram top side of beef. You can use brisket as well, it's fantastic. Roughly this is the size you want. I have a 500 gram of spare ribs, 200 grams of sausages. Just cut them in half. A little salt, pepper. Mix it, mix it, mix it, mix. Yeah, I can hear that beautiful noise. And it's the music I wanted. You get two bay leaves. Come on, I'm gonna put the three inside. Don't just put the leaves, break it. Inside, seal the meat properly. I wanted them all like this. Yes. One, onions. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry if it's not too thick. The onions will dissolve it. Come have a look, get inside. Look at the color. Pork makes everything tasting good. Wine goes in. The wine you bring it is the one you use. Do not use a cooking wine. Come on, why is it cooking wine? Colored water? Ah, no way. It's almost dancing inside. Let the wine evaporate. So what that you do, you evaporate the alcohol. I want the onion to sweat, not to burn. Do you know what the difference between sweat and burn? Let me tell you. You need a bit of exercise, so you go jogging. <laughs> what do you do when you jog it? You sweat. That is a sweat. Okay, burn, you go on to a holiday anywhere around the world, including Italy. You stand under the sun and for two hours or three hours, you burn. You don't want to do that. Three tins of tomato, chopped. They kiss one each other, they go all in. Give them a little stir. Remember, it's still on a high flame. Good. Put about half a glass of wine, two tablespoons of a concentrated tomato. You dissolve it inside of a wine. Yeah. Now, fill it up with water. Two, three. Put them inside. Creating. Stir it. And it goes. Can you see the bubbling on the side? Yes. When you start to do that, you get a lovely bunch of basil. A lot of gas. Look, it's all bubbling. Fantastic. And let it cook for about two hours. Memory back. I'm, I'm no joking. I remember my mama used to do this on a Sunday lunch. Come have a look inside here, come on. This is the perfect ragu, which goes well with the perfect tagliatelle. Look at that, as soon as I put the past inside, it started dancing. Yes, the smell brings me memory back. I can't actually say anything. When you drizzle a bit of parmesan on top, it's like a bride and a groom throwing confetti on it. It's just fantastic. Drizzle of olive oil. Let's enjoy it. Mm. Sure. 
bellissimo! Today I'm gonna make for you zabaglione. Zabaglione, it is a dessert. So simple to make, it's unbelievable. And look what I have. I am in my hometown in Minori, above Minori. The mountains, the sea, it's all here. You need first, you need egg, sugar. Make sure the sugar you use is caster sugar. Limoncello liqueurs. You can make also with marsala or some other sweet liqueurs. Then you need a nice lemon. Here I got perfect lemons. Why is green? Because this time of the year the lemon green doesn't mean it's not good. It's a full of zest. Oh, mamma mia, so beautiful. Right, let me show you what I do it. First, you need a five yolk of egg. Break the egg, just the yolk. And look at the yolk. And look how fantastic a color is the yolk. I need another one. I do over here. Right. Two tablespoons of sugar, caster sugar, one and two. Let's so for now. Whisk. You start to beat it. Make sure you have a large bowl and then you go in. The stage, you have to stir them up properly. You have to show that you break the egg and also dissolve the sugar because you can see the sugar is still underneath. Can you see the sugar here? You know, I want this sugar to dissolve a little bit. This stage, after I bit me a little bit, I need to put two shots of limoncello, which is 55 or mil. 25, 25, make 50. A little bit for me, just, just, just a little touch for me. You mix everything in properly. Now you can see it start to fluffy up. Look at that, look at the fluffing to go on bain marie, on boiling water. But remember, when you make it, you act for fluffy the eggs. You don't have to make a scrambled egg. So be very, very, very careful. You follow me, you can see the way I'm making it. Now I can work it. Always keep them under control. Let you warm it up a little bit. Look at the way it's fluffing up. Come on. Yes, it is done. You can see it's not a scrambled egg. It is a perfect zampaglione. Look underneath. Can you see? Here, it's not scrambled egg. It is a perfect zampaglione. But, sorry, I have to put my little finger inside. Paradise. I suggest to get some lovely biscuit, soft biscuit or crunchy biscuit. Look what I have inside here. I got some lovely biscuit with amaretti. I already prepared everything here. Oh yes, actually I'm gonna pour inside. Looks the way it's runny. Yes! It's one. Come on. Look how clean is the plate. You can see it's not a scrambled egg. Can I? I'm sorry, I don't want to waste this bit. Oh my, my, have a lovely zest of a lemon. Let it run. This is fantastic. And when actually I cooked on a very gentle heat, is the water bubbly underneath. What actually is due to the eggs, the sugar and the alcohol Fluffing up, it is very important. Also, fluffing up, they bind everything together and they give it a fantastic flavor. So when you actually put your spoon inside, you got everything together, like a perfect marriage. Look at that, look at the way it's stained it.
Hey, Amir! Amir, I can see you! Oh my god, this is the beauty of a cannelloni. Hi, lovely people! Today, I'm gonna make cannelloni, the most Italian recipe. You can make a cannelloni with everything. The traditional one is spinach, ricotta, parmesan, a little nutmeg. This particular one, it is with beef and pork. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have an onion, which I'm gonna chop it very finely. But two, three tablespoons of olive oil. Oh, I love that noise. Chuck, 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 chuck. Sweat and onions for three, four minutes. 150 grams of a pork. This is beef to give it the right balance. Sweat to the meats for about 10 minutes. Okay, now it's halfway. You get the salami, roughly chopped. Because I use that as a savory, I use it as a salt. You get about five, six leaves of sage. Slowly, without cutting your fingers. Ah! No, it's only joking, you don't. Just put them inside. The smell, it is incredible, unbelievable. I put everything inside the bowl. It's nice and cool down. And I've got lovely ricotta. Just start to mix it. The reason why I cool down, because you're gonna crack an egg inside. Because you don't want it to be scrambles. Start to mix again. And full of breadcrumbs. But also again, it works as a bond. Right, it's done. Simple tomato sauce. You know how to make, you know, garlic, a bit of basil inside, cook them all together. So simple. Let's fill the cannoli now. Where are you? Where are you? Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So first of all, you need to, to cut it and start to fill it. Push it down. Then you just put in, hold your hands underneath. So easy. Just put them inside. Then you can't even do that. And there's another one that goes in. Look at that, fantastic. Oh my God. So then it gets the rest of the sauce. Just make sure it goes everywhere because the sauce will cook the pasta. So easy. Then cover it with foil, put them in the oven for about 30 minutes, remove the foil, and put it back in the oven for about another 10 minutes and you will enjoy it. Ah, let's just put a bit of cheese on top. Oh yes. Let's put them in the oven for about a few more minutes and then it should be ready. Oh my, my, look at this. I want to eat, and I want to eat it straight away now. Oh my, my. The smell is unbelievable. Yeah, I'm happy. Sorry, but I have to eat it. Mmm. Mmm. The flavor of the tomato, the, the, the filling of the meat with a little bit of salami inside. What can I say? Just make it. Enjoy. Why I'm cooking so good? I don't know, but I do. Bless you all. Arrivederci. Hi, lovely people. I'm going to show you how to prepare the perfect fennel. Remove the top, keep it. Have a look if there is any mark on the fennel. Remove it. This is small fennel is the best. So put those on the side. Then cut them again, remove it that part which is tough. You can wash it if you want at this stage, or you can make a lovely salad. This part is a little bit tough. Cut it. You can braise it in the oven with a little bit of butter, and sprinkle some parmesan on top. Fantastic. With the tops, select it, all the green part. This is will go very well with the salads. Then with the top, you can use them in a stock. Just a little bit because he has a very strong flavor. This card, the lot. Let me show you how to make a fantastic pumpkin sauce with rosemary, garlic, and chili. You love it. And I'm gonna cook farfalle. This is a freshly homemade farfalle, which I made early on. Right, first out the things, look the pumpkins. Oh my my, it's here. I just started to cut it. Look at that. This is delicious. 
the orange yellow color it is so important it tell you that it's ready to be eaten and that's so heavy just let me move it this one stay there don't move look at that fantastic view amalfi coast my hometown to do a pumpkin sauce first out of the things cut it through remember you can ask your greengrocer look at that have a slice yeah that's it line it we're only going to use it roughly for those which is making about three to four that's what you need so roughly you need about 400 gram it is a so delicious have you seen anything like it you cut it you slice it little squares I cut them this way myself I find much better you see what I done it cut them to all different slice then I go down cut them again side way look at that can you see and then with a knife look at that simple oh yes oh yes yeah some they're big some they're small doesn't matter you got all this fantastic lovely pumpkins it's about 400 grams now we're going to the cooking olive oil abundant olive oil make sure you use good olive oil yes it's a knife let it get hot a little bit get some garlic first you crush it okay and then you fill it simple it's done chili I can't live without the chili this fantastic if you want them hot you use couple if they're this small if you do want the less hot what you do it just remove the seeds so simple but I like him a little bit spicy so cut it yeah get a garlic as well slice it fantastic inside I'm gonna put everything ever so easy Moving around a little bit then you get two branch of rosemary don't do anything just cut it rosemary that will give it a fantastic flavor the lovely smell don't put too much rosemary that is enough for 400 grams and a nice spoon stir it nicely let it come up to nice sweating that is done this is the way I want it I'm going to the pumpkins all in stir it let this get again very hot because you need to get the hot the flame catch it and start to cook it then you need stock if it's vegetable stock don't be afraid if it's chicken stock go straight in I'm gonna put them all in and now it's a stewing now is when it's gonna become a sauce with bits and pieces inside okay now we have to leave it for a few minutes seasoning with a little bit of salt a little bit of peppers pepper leave it it's almost there come have a look come have a look inside the way it's dissolved with the pumpkins if I press this one look but you don't want full dissolve look at that fantastic what a lovely sauce I cooked this one for about after the stock come up to boiling again and I cook for about four minutes now we're going to the farfalle go boiling water always make sure you use salt the water is boiling then get all the farfalle inside cover and let come up to boil again parmesan I'm gonna use this parmesan plate here 
Gonna stir them a little bit, the farfalle. Come on. Mmm, they're ready. This beautiful farfalle, they're gonna get straight inside here. Yes. Come have a look. Stir it. I need to stir it. Look at that sauce of the pumpkins. The pumpkins almost dissolve with the garlic, the chili and rosemary. They bind it all together to create the perfect harmony. I need a little olive oil because I love olive oil. Just a little touch. Give me an extra stir. I know you want to eat it. Me too. Parmesan. This is mine. Little olive oil, little blanch of rosemary, just for you to remember what it is. And this is pumpkins with farfalle. What a joy. I'm gonna go a little bit sweety now. I love sweet, it's such a joy, sweet is good. I'm gonna make a torta di riso, orange rice cake. You will love it, so simple to make. Look, I'm sitting so relaxed in this place. We start with the milk, which is bubbling away, nicely simmer it. Vanilla pot, straight in. Always give them a little bit of stir. Sugar. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Let's not forget the rice. This is risotto rice. I keep stirring, so what do you want to do? Amalfi lemons. One, two, and three. In. Keep stirring it. Fantastic. It starts to boil in, turn it down because you have to simmer it. Look. Five of eggs, separate it. I split the yolk from the white of egg. Again, another one. In! Simple, so simple. Clean your hands. Orange liqueur, very sweet. I'm going to use about three top. One, two, and three. Simple. Mix it. Make sure you clean it before you go into the white. And here we go. And mix it. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Yes. Now, to see if it's ready. Yes, it stays. You thought I was going to drop it, but you had no chance. The rice, it will come like this. It's cooled down now. You get the vanilla pot and make sure you squeeze everything there is. Raisin, all in. Zest of orange, all whole orange. When you finish it, don't forget, you can eat the orange. You don't chuck them away. Ah, come on. Straight in. Oh, yes. Mix in. Surely you have to mix in properly. Okay, let's do it. Now you fold it. The word folding is not just squashing around. Folding, folding, folding. This is what will give it the lightness. Is this ready? Oh yes, don't go. I forgot to remove the lemons. There's supposed to be three of those. Cake tins, you lay it with a little bit of butter. You cut oven-proof paper inside. You make sure that it's quite high on the side. Slowly, pick them up. Yes. I remember when mum used to make this price cake. I 
I always wear that with a finger bag. Nah, it is all done. Look how wonderful! You got a lovely bubbly ready to be cooked. You put them in the oven for about an hour. A good one which I done early on. Has somebody sabotaged me? Chocolate? No, it is not the chocolate. It is when you actually cook it, the top always almost caramelized. But it's not full caramelized. Do you know what it is? A pure love. Now, last but not the least, ice and sugar. Yes, beautiful. Orange. Little lips. And this is orange rice cake. Torta di riso. Bless the person taught me how to do it. She's in paradise and today I will share a slice of cake with her. Memory, memory, memory. It is so delicious. Tagliarini with a fresh tomato sauce. Wow, you will love it. Watch me the way I'm doing. This is fresh homemade tagliarini. How many times you put tomato inside the fridge? Why? Tomato, they're growing in very hot weather. And you put them inside the fridge. <laughs> put them in a bowl and leave them inside the house. In the kitchen is the best place. Tomato, make sure they're nice and clean. Just cut them it any way you like it. Cherry tomato, small or big, any way you like it. Don't have to worry about it the way you do it. If they're ripe, look at the way you do it. If you want a smelly tomato, this is what this smells tomato. <gasps> yes. Ah, look at that way. I just to chop them all up. And I'm going to use them all. And yes. That's all. It's done. I'm going to keep some of those. And I'm going to squash it. My hands. Yes. Because I want to get the oil out. Because also I will use this to renounce the flavor of the tomato. Oh God. Leave them this one here. Now you need garlic. Here is about half a kilo of tomato, 500 grams of a tomato, fresh and ripe. Make sure you only cook with a nice and fresh ripe tomato. Garlic, one, two, because roughly it's a large garlic which I slice in two. And then I need another one. I need all the ingredients ready to do it. It's one. Then cut it, slice it. Look the way I'm slicing it. Roughly. Garlic is good for you, good for your skin, good for your stomach, good for everything. Most of anything, good for the vampire. Roughly chop, that is good. Come on, now you can go on top here. Chili. Those, the very strong chili, I use only two. If you don't want a very, very strong chili, remove the seeds inside. Good, it's done it. The water is boiling, olive oil goes in, banded olive oil, yes. The chili goes in. Oh, yes. Remember the story, sweat, not burn, told you many times. Sweat when you're jogging, burn when you sit under the sun. Look, it starts to get a nice color. Straight to the tomato inside. Yes. Nice. Basil, just bundle of basil. Simple. Simple. Stir them a little bit. Come here, come here. Come have a look. Look at that. The tomato is almost to dissolve it. Season it. A little bit and up. Now you go straight. 
come near me to the pasta boiling water this is without any salt right look at that water garlic the chili the basil three ingredient maximum flavor let you reduce a little bit it's almost reduced it you can see some of the big some of the small do you remember the stalk of a tomato it's oily i press it just put them inside oh my my beautiful small pasta remove the lid season the water get the pasta in Come have a look, come have a look. I don't want to stand up the lens. Look, extend this still here. Stir them a little bit. Cover. Let it come up to boiling. It's one. The one, two. Okay. Now, little extra bit of olive oil. Come on, it's done. Ready now to put the pasta inside. Come on. Anymore? You've done your job. I can remove it. Yes. Just is ready. I want to get all this lovely tomato right on it. Drizzle of olive oil, grate it of a nice Parmesan cheese. few sweet leaves of a basil. This is tagliarini with a fresh tomato, garlic, chili and basil. Hi lovely people, I'm going to show you how to pit an olive. So simple. First of all, if they come in a jar, drain it. Pick up an olive, put it inside your mouth. Mm. I'm only joking. You pick up an olive, put between your finger and slowly squeeze it sideways. The stone is out. And the olives stay together again. This is only work with black olives. The green one is a little bit tougher. Use olive pita. That is one way to do it. Another way, put them on a boat, use a knife, flat, and crush it. Then you can see the stone. Remove it, it's so fantastic. Hi, lovely people of the food tube. Let me show you how to make a perfect Sausages and radicchio risotto. So simple, so good, so incredible delicious. Let's do it. First of all, olive oil, couple of spoons, one full tablespoon of onions. I already chopped. Sweat them a little bit. I make them for about two people. Here, I go five sausages. I remove the skin. You'll have two of those to use them on top of the risotto later. Then grab the sausages, just break them inside can be any kind of sausages. Keep stirring it and try to break it now. When they start to change these lovely colors, it's ready, lovely. Get about one beautiful radicchio, sweet and sour, lovely, lovely flavor. Roughly chop that little bit of bitterness with the sweetness of the onions, combines those well together. Beautiful. Get about two handful of rice, it's about 17 to 100 grams each of rice. And this particular rice I'm using is arborio rice. Keep stirring it and let it toast. Always use a wooden spoon. Don't use no metal spoons because you will break the rice. Then you need a very, 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 very good splash of wine. But half a glass, dry, sweet, doesn't matter. Oh my, my. So once all the alcohol is evaporated 
and the lovely flavor of the grapes is inside, you use it a very good chicken stock. Oh yes, I keep stirring it. As soon as you see that the stock evaporate, go back in again with some more stock and keep stirring it. We take roughly 20 minutes on gentle flame of gas. In the meantime, those two sausages without skin. Parmesan, half tablespoons, parsley. You give it a freshness. So you mix it. When this one is done, put a bit of water on your hands and you roll it. You see, your hands is clean. Just have a little of olive oil. Let this get very hot. One by one, just put them inside. And now, those is ready. Look at the start to get lovely colors. So we put them on the side and let's just concentrate on the risotto. Just a little bit more. I don't want it to run in, but I don't want it to dry. No of over butter, keep stirring it. Get that creaming up, give it a lovely flavor. One and a half tablespoons of a Parmesan cheese. <gasps> oh my man, look at this. Why I'm cooking so good? Why, why, why? How can you tell it the risotto? It's ready. It's still al dente, it's still a little bit crunchy. So when you actually, you bite inside the risotto, it's soft. The last fractions, it just crack. So you will chew it longer, and then you will taste it better, and then you will digest it better. But then, how do that? When actually you're done with the risotto, you cover and you leave it for about three minutes. Oh yes, a little grated over parmesan, sausage, and a little drizzle of balsamic vinegar. Of radicchio. And this is the perfect sausage and radicchio risotto. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to cry. This is a proper, proper comfort food. Love you all. Arrivederci. Ciao, ciao. I'm gonna make a gnocchi, gnocchi with a squash. So simple dish to make. It's really, really homely dish, really comfort food. So I need one whole squash, cut me in the small square, small pieces, one chili, four cloves of garlic, four spring of rosemary, one stock cube, half a liter of water, and olive oil. One chili, okay? Remember, when you remove the top of the chili, just pull it. Your little head. So we start again with the chili. We slice it. Then you get the garlic, slice the garlic. So we got the chili, we got the garlic, we got the rosemary. It's all here. I don't even want to get up because it's so easy. So relax. Nice olive oil is about four tablespoons of olive oil, roughly. You get everything together. Just put them in. Squash. If you don't have a squash, don't forget you can use also pumpkin. Little salt, little spice, which is peppers, water, stock cube, spring them along top. Everything densely together. Let it cook and simmer for 25 to 30 minutes. One and a half kilo of a potato and I baked it for one hour to one degree. Scoop out the potato and make sure no skin goes inside. There is some skin inside so you can't really rice the potato properly. When you scoop the potato, they're warm. You can see, look, easy. Last one is done. Now, I'm gonna mash the potato. Use a potato riser. Just put a few at a time, not too many. 
Look at that. This is what I call my potato rice. Look. As you can see, it's all a lovely mashed up. Two eggs, you only have to use the yolk of egg. So, a little salt, it is very, very, very important. And quarter of a nutmeg. Do not overwork it. The egg have to go everywhere. This particular dish is come from the comfort book, which me and Jamie, we shot it on a boat. And that was so delicious. So Jamie said, right, let's put them inside the book. So 150 grams of double zero flour. Go straight inside. Then you put them on top of the table. Let's start to mix it. Mix it nice. Cut a little slice. Look at that beauty. Roll it out. About two centimeter thick. Then you start to put some flour for dusting. Okay, that's done. And then always push them toward the flour. Then, if you have something like that, butter flap, you grab it, you press it, and you roll it out. This little line which will catch the lovely sauce. This is what I'm gonna get up. My beautiful sauce. Look at that, it's done. I'm gonna transfer it just a little bit inside the other pan. Just gonna put some little bit of pasta water inside. Make sure when you cook gnocchi, few at a time, because they will cool the water and they will get all mashed up. Grab the gnocchi. It takes about a minute. As soon as the gnocchi come up, grab it, put it inside the sauce. Get a plate. Right, a little grated of parmesan, olive oil, a little spring of rosemary, and this is the perfect gnocchi. If somebody made it better than this one, we, when I say we, don't want to know. Bless you all, ciao! I gonna cook chicken with garlic and rosemary. Please look the weather. I can't believe it. Cooking a storm with a storm. What can I do more than that? <laughs> Don't be afraid, I'm here. You gonna enjoy it because I'm enjoying so much. It's such a simple dish to do. Three ingredients, maximum flavor. One kilogram of drumstick and thighs. First, you have to cut in chunks, right? One, use everything. If you can't use your hands, use a rolling pin. Come on, come on. My salt is jumping and make sure the skin is on. Lovely sometimes to have a nice bit of skin. You got all this, straight in. I love cooking this weather. I just love it. This is the pieces. I'm turning the other way around. One, which is good. Two. Now you need four pieces. Turn them around. And look at that. Fantastico. Fantastico. All right, I'm over the plate. Now this is come to the best. Salt. Use a salt which you can feel it, sea salt. Look at that, I can count it almost every single one. And you put that all in it. Grab a bit of peppers. It's not that very fine like a, like a sand dust. You know, gross, you can see. Get your hands and mix it. Mix it, mix it, mix it. You make sure the salt goes everywhere. You don't have to do anything else. Stay there, don't move. Saucepan is out. Olive oil. It's fantastic, it's good for you. I can hear the bell. Tell me to hurry up. Olive oil goes in. And a little splash of water, like everything is splash. Then, you get the chicken. 
put them inside, already season it. Stir it. Ah, yeah. Keep it stirring and get the lovely color. Garlic. Open the garlic. Look at that. Oh my, my. Oh my, my. Come on, you try to stop me cooking. You can't. Crush the garlic with your hands and leave everything, even the skin. You need to put one kilo, one, two, three, four, five, six. And rosemary. This is how much rosemary you're gonna get it. Cut it. One, two, three, four. Garlic and rosemary. You need some nice chili. Couple of chili. That should be okay. It's all there. Look at that. Let me just put something on the front. Yeah. Start to seal it, start to come really nice. At this stage, when it's nice and sealed, get a garlic and you can see the garlic. Put them on top. Everywhere. Don't be afraid. Look, I'm gonna put another two. Now you come to the rosemary. One. Two, three, and four. And for the chili, it's quite strong, so just use two chili, which leave them all. You can see I left it. Put them on top. Okay. Wash your hands like I do it. I just was born just around the corner. There's right at the end. Now, at this stage, turn the gas low and cover it with the lid. Make sure it's well covered. And let it cook slowly, slowly for about 35 minutes. Now and again, go in and make sure it won't stack, it won't burn. Okay, take a look. It is ready. It cooked it very, very slow. Now I turn the gas right high because I'm gonna put the wine inside. Oh my, my, look at the colors. Come near and hear this noise. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh my, my, look at that. It's become almost creamy. I made some fantastic bruschette. Bruschette is a slice of rustic bread which are griddled and are gonna wrap some garlic on top and drizzle with olive oil. I kept very warm on the cloth. There it is. I'm gonna chuck my umbrella away, my lucky umbrella. And this is the bread with so much love and passion. Look at that. Now I get nice bit of garlic, never mind about the skin, and I wrap every single one, just a little bit on top to get a full flavor. Yes, yes. It is ready because I can see the oil start to come up. The wine is all evaporated. This is hot. Wow. Yes, turn the gas off. Come on, slowly. I will put it a few pieces at a time on each bruschetta. There it goes. This is chicken with the garlic and rosemary with a splash wine. Enjoy it. Let me show you what I'm gonna make in now. Amaretti, a chocolate pudding. A few little bit down, you hit this pudding and you're gonna go, wow, you're gonna pass it up, hallelujah. So simple. You will love it. I have a 500 ml of lukewarm milk. And I'm gonna put inside two tablespoons of sugar. One, two, and then one tablespoon of flour. And switch on 
your gas, stir it. I put the flour inside when the milk is still warm, it's not very hot. The reason if you do this, you know, it won't go lumpy and it will be fantastic. Keep stirring it. I'm gonna have three cups of amaretti. Do you know what? I love it so much, I'm gonna have an extra one for me. You don't have to do that, but I love it. So, keep stirring it. Vanilla pot. This is all the seeds, can you see? Keep it stir it, because you don't want it to get hot. As soon as it starts to get warm, it starts to get thicker. While it starts to get thicker, you put 50 grams of butter. I load the gas, because you don't want to burn it. Oh yes, get a nice chocolate, crush it, about 100 grams. You can do this well in advance. You don't have to do like me. It goes in. The smell is incredible. It goes whoa, 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 whoa. A chocolate is there. I'm gonna put about another 25 grams of chocolate inside. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I wish your eyes can see what I can see. Don't you think this is beautiful where I am? Look at that. I'm in my kingdom. Yes, it's all beautiful. Have them all inside. And the gas a little bit high. It keeps stirring. It takes a minute. Don't do like me. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Look at the bubbly on the side. That means it's ready. You don't want to actually to bubbly all over because you might can burn. At this stage, off. Keep stirring it. You lose the whisk and you get a spoon. Yes, look at that. Fantastic, look how smooth and silk it is. Then the last, not the least, the Maretti biscuit. Crush it on top. Amaretti, a chocolate pudding. Let us celebrate it this way. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> I can taste them inside the amaretti, the liquors, the crunchiness of amaretti, the vanilla pot. Mm. I'm buzzing again and I join again. For now, I say arrivederci, bless you. Today I'm going to make Italian meatball sub, which is full of flavor. And all the sauce is going to go inside, a little bit of cheese is going to go inside, they're banked in the oven. When you eat it, <gasps> Italy. First of all, the sauce. You need about one, two, three tablespoons of olive oil. Make sure you use very, very, very good olive oil. Then we start with an onions first. Then you go straight with the carrots. Simple ways to chop the carrots to do fine. Oh yes. So at this stage, actually, I'm using only half of the carrots. Then straight in. Celery. Don't worry if sometimes it's roughly chopped or if it's too big, because you need to blend the sauce. Straight in. Two chili. Straight in. We come to the peppers. If you can't find it already in jar, just roast it some peppers. And uh, when you roast some paper, put them in a plate, cover up with a clean film, and then you remove the skin. Straight inside. This stage, little splash of wine. You do need a little splash of wine. Wine, which they give it a fantastic left, that give a lovely smoke. Yeah, it's done. So when you got all this in, 
three tins of tomato, straight in. Just put the other one in. Now, with one of this, I need to fill with water. For spice, black pepper, a little pinch of salt. While it's cooking, for about a quarter of an hour, let's do it a meatball. The meatball, okay, first I need a handful of a parsley. Okay, let's move this one away for now. When you chop it, a parsley or any other herbs, you grab them all together and slowly with a knife, you make them very, very fine. Straight inside the bowl, two cloves of garlic, straight inside. You crack one egg. So, here you got two beautiful minced. One is pork, and then you got this lovely beef. So, it's about 500 grams, 250 grams of each. 100 gram of fresh breadcrumbs. Pinch of salt. Pinch of pepper. I love the words, pepper. Drizzle of olive oil. 100 grams of grated parmesan. Yeah, let's do it. Now you have to mix. One hand you hold it and the other one you press it. You get that lovely egg which is bind all together. Right, let's move with this one for a minute from here. Let's put everything on the table. So you grab it. Have to be a side of table tennis ball is the best thing because they will shrink a little bit. And then you do uh, quite a few. Then at this stage, you dust with a little bit of a flour. Yes. Roll it in a little bit, it's gone. Why I put that lovely bit of flour? Because when they seal it, they create a little crust. Ah, this is ready to go. Look how nice and thick it's got. Before I have to put those inside, I need to do one more thing. I need to blend it slowly. It's done. Good. In a frying pan, drizzle some lovely oil, extra virgin olive oil, always like extra virgin olive oil, about four to five tablespoons. Slowly, you put a meatball, you fry them all. Also, you can roll it with the rest of the flour. You don't actually want to cook in full, you just want to crust it up because I want them to cook me in the sauce. You see, just to get a little bit of crust. That is ready. And then you can put it straight inside. Ah. Let's move this one out. Okay, stir it. Simmer it for about 50 minutes, one five. And then I will show you what we do it. I need to get some mozzarella. Cut them a few slices of a mozzarella. Very thin slice, good. You get a sub, cut it on the side. I need a little plate to start. First, last little bit of salt on top. Then, get some nice meatball. Oh my, look at that. Get a nice little bit of a mozzarella on top. Come on, the extra bit. Then you put them in the trays. Yes. Put them in the oven. Right on top. It's going to be in the oven for about two, three minutes. The mozzarella melted. Look at that. Look how beautiful it is. Here, there is some wild rockets. Squeeze a little bit of lemon, a little salt, drizzle a lot of extra virgin olive oil, mix all together. I can't believe it. Put them on top, crush it. So delicious. Just put them all together. And this is my Italian meatball sub. Shall we taste it now? Oh my God, oh my God. 
Okay. Yeah, level this crest. We've done to that one. Nothing. Oh, come on. This is not because it's only one piece. Can we? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, man. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Let us all enjoy it together. Yeah. Shall we say goodbye? Delicious. So good. Bye, guys. That's the best sandwich.